Country Mountain Overlanding started as a YouTube channel to save our memories of our travels. My name is Christine, my husband's name is Carl. We've had this life journey of 40 years together and now we found ourselves at retirement. We have to stop now and find the peace and beauty travel has to offer. We created this road trip specifically to find our inner tranquility, enjoy time together and explore places we've never been to. Travel with us over passes and through rivers and bushes to experience what we did. This is Overlanding Eastern Cape, South Africa. So we go up in one of the shallow parts of the river to actually one of the deepest parts. Just in front of us, 27 meters in depth. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, just in this particular point. The rest of the river is basically one and a half, two meters, depending which tide we're on. So the original way across this river was with the River Ferry, a river pond. That was train operated. Then you can operate from the right hand side, you see this little beach. Then yeah. that point, the red rock. Then from 1891 to 1927, 
That's when they built the first layer of the bridge. That bridge built just on the other side of today's existing bridge. This river floats now, it'll be, it'll be um, 30 to 50 years, and the original bridge got washed away in 1931. 1932, sorry. The original bridge got washed away, so they then decided to pull the new bridge further up the river to try and avoid flooding in the future. And they built this road system running on the right hand side. You'll see it as you come around the corner. And they cut the rock out the mouth to create the road. Okay. Using no cement to more than the construction, what we call a fly bowl. So, now the gates position the bridge a little bit further up, the new bridge, but they found the quickest of the bridge where they wanted to. The whole thing was canceled. So, next to this road, it goes yeah, absolutely yeah. nowhere. Yeah. Just used as a walking trail today. So, if you come around the corner now on the right, we'll just give you the old road. And we'll see how they've cut the rock out the mouth now to create the road. Okay. Yes. Oh, this road was built on the principle of ideas of a very famous road builder by the name of Thomas Bain. Um, he built most of our roads and passes in the Western Cape. And he could build two or three of these roads at any given one time over various parts of the country and still build them all to schedule. It's about to sketch the area, the plants, the animals, and the topography, which helped us immensely over the years. Some of the more famous roads and passes he built was the Swartberg and the Prince Alfred Passes, just to name but a few. It's probably his best piece of work being the Prince Alfred Pass, runs from the back of Hyde to going up to Uniondale. 70 kilometer road and pass took him four years to construct, <laughs> roughly 250 convict laborers, and initial budget 150,000 pounds. Wow. You've been getting up building on the budget by 4,000. Just gives you a good idea as to what type of engineer he actually was. Right, so look at the regular history. Prince Alfred. Anybody know Prince Alfred's mother was? The most famous of all the queens. But we're not talking about Freddie Mercury either. <laughs> yeah, same as of Queen Victoria. Why, you know, one of the friends in Cape Town, Victoria and Alfred Waterbrook. Most people, especially the English, think it is Alfred. Alfred was the name of her husband. The name of Alfred, Alfred, he laid the first water to for Cape Town breakwater. That's why it's called being a water front. Sorry, I had Alfred water front. Rock. On the right or the left, see a thick black line running along the edge of the rocks near the water. This black line is the tidal mark. Right. The top of the black line would tell us we're on a spring high tide, the highest of all the tides. If it is high tide on the sea at 6 o'clock, when you're going to be high tide river, 8 o'clock. We are two hours behind. Same applies low tide. The river fluctuates one and a half to two meters, depending which tide we're on. In Europe, you can get a variance of seven to fourteen meters. Very, very small. Kind of rates of the river, I'm sure you kind of all know this was very black and polluted. In fact, it is neither. Actually, crystal clear. This is what they call. The reason the river is this color, the soil around you, very low with lime. The plant type, particularly the paint bus, is very high in acid. After it rains, and all the vegetation and soil comes into the river, 
A jigsaw and perception called Tenon to so finding a V by E that Ari was down. So the truth down of the river, Rusty, Ari, Jahan, by jumping the water right now, we're going black. Excuse me, Ari. Yeah. I'm going to stay in the tenant and just looks Ari. So the river system is not polluted, you know, that moment when you get on by the boat, you see little holes in the sand. Most little holes come from the sand. A little strip, about five centimeters. Looks like a baby lobster. Use this for bait for fishing, not when eating. They tell us this river system is clean, it's not polluted. All the fish in this part of the river are open going. The guest stream makes itself great. We've got a wide variety white stuff coat, white steam brass, got frog, a cover there, mullet, straighty, spotted grunter. We even have giant fish in there, the large herpes of Jarek, Shadow Alp, and even Stick Jack that run through the system. No crocodile, no shark, no hippopotamus. River very safe to swim in. Water temperature today running roughly 23, 24 degrees. It is okay. ideal to swim in. Boat cruise takes you up the Kierbooms River into the Kierbooms Nature Reserve. We had all the great whites here. We lost two people a year ago. At the beginning of that season, there was a great white in the system. Came into the mouth. And they'll travel maybe a kilometer, two kilometers up, but then it gets too fresh for them. Okay. So the Breda River has got a lot of bulls on and we don't know why. Oh. All right, left hand side of the beach called Ski Beach. Called okay. the water skiing section from the bridge we pass underneath the orange market went front. You're only allowed to water ski at speed this section of the river, 10 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Uh, all the main beach has been formed naturally by the river. river comes to a bend here like on the right and forces the sand from the outside to the inside, thus creating the beach. All the main beaches have got facilities on them. We've got picnic tables, fry facilities, as well as flushing toilets. The only way to get you have our water, no other way. This is what keeps the area nice and pristine. Looking for jetty fish, we saw them yesterday. Yeah, put on. So, jetty fish living in this room and live here in this system permanently. Um, sometimes we don't see them for a period of time, but they are here. And then they create a flu where all of a sudden there's been an explosion of jetty fish. We don't know why, whether it's water temperature, food in the water, combination of both, we don't really know. Jellyfish are clones of the original. Oh. Wow. All clones of the original jellyfish. 
And you do get a jellyfish on the wall, which is um, eternal. The eternal jellyfish, it never dies. Oh. It respawns itself. Oh, yep. So it's quite here. There's another one. Oh. So I've been on the river and I've seen literally thousands of them. Oh, yeah. There's one there. Yeah. You see him there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Quite a few, yeah, now. There's one. There's quite a few there. there. Yeah. Mm, I missed it. Oh, did they sting if you sting? No, uh, they only sting the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we don't go in the water. Oh, that's loads. Yeah. yeah. No, these ones are totally harmless. The on top of the head is actually their eyes and their nervous system, believe it or not. Oh. So these ones they say actually are edible. Wait until you start seeing thousands of them. I mean, yeah, they're starting to they're starting to bloom because none of them are exactly very big yet. So these are all newbies. Oh. It's navigable for 12 kilometers from the mass. So, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Officially, tent. You can also hire your own motorized boat and cruise up the river yourself. in South Africa today, we've only got 1% of this type of forest left. Um, of that 1%, the majority lies here on the garden route between Kruidbrak, Mossel Bay, to Tikavas. Look at the forest here on our right, we see it's pretty thick and lush, doing quite well. We know this, if you look at the top of the trees, you see there's a creeper, it's called micro canopy. It is symbiotic, not parasite, they help each other to grow. Canopy can be made out of forest grain, the monkey vine, as well as the linea or liana. See it hanging nice at a lot of these trees here on our right. So a lot of these trees on our right at the moment are yellow woods. And you've got two types in the area, real and Kutunigwa. Now besides the fact that you use both of them today to make high quality furniture, real yellow wood is our national tree. Why we have such little indigenous forests left in the region? Late 1700s, early 1800s, this area used mainly for timber. to the garden room. This is uh, not about nice little lawn rose bushes. We're looking at the garden right now. And most of you have been down in this area before, so you kind of know what you're looking at. But there's so many people that still come down here. And uh, you're going to see manicured walls with rose bushes. All right, so the nice big yellow one coming out down your left. Okay, for yellow one. The photograph is called Quadlis, you can say deep. They grow 800 to 1,000 years, then some of southern Africa's tallest indigenous trees are 50 meters in height, setting in the terrain. 
I'm not a big one for beating, but Ty can be pretty here. They think, well, head up, touching hand to hand to circle the tree. That's on you as a baby. That's on. That's where the ocean water. used to lie. Wow. So for millions of years, the sediment fell, compacted and hardened, creating these layers. Mainly made out of Table Mountain quartzite, Table Mountain sandstone. You see something? Angle. You see that quite clearly. If you look straight in front of the boat, you see all the mountains kind of run at the same angle. Yeah. These mountains all fall part of the Cape 12 mountain belt, stretch all the way from here to Table Mountain in Cape Town. This river separating two mountain ranges. The Chicama Mountains are on our right, the Tinequa Mountains are on our left. Both of them are Khoi words, Khoi being one of the original inhabitants of the area. Sitsikama means place of plenty of water, the sparkling water or crystal water. Oshnikwa means man who made it for night, man carrying plenty. From inland down to the coast over the winter, when they come over the mountains, lots of all winter flowering plants in group called plain boss, lots of bees, lots of honey. That's where they did their honey collection. That's why man laid it for honey. Highly recommend while you're in the Western Cape, go find yourself with plain boss honey. Okay, when the Koi first came into the area, they stood on top of the mountain, they looked down and they saw that beautiful bay area in front of them. And they looked at each other and they said, Nice, man. <laughs> the Kierbuens River Ferries is an informative boat cruise as well as an unforgettable experience. The Prati is the only, well, it's one of the few plain uh, boats that doesn't have fine leaf leaves, they actually big leaves. But all plain boss leaves are very tough and leathery, and that's to stop animals from browsing. Okay. Now, I already found the ferret in this warming here. Yeah. Is that all right? Uh-huh. So, yeah. So, and I've started visiting her. I've actually visited her uh, every day, once a day. Sometimes two, three times that I built up a relationship with the bird. Quite like she does. She's got used to me. The male, I don't know if that was the male or the female. He doesn't like me. Like no, she also patterns with me. We get a nice. Sometimes when they, this is more than normally they, they used to like to hang out there. So when you get them often in the gap, you see them nicely. The black crowned night heron normally roosts in trees and reeds and comes out at dusk or at night to feed. Right, so these little look like little trees, the black nodules growing on the end of the branches. That's a protea. That's one of the proteas, and that's actually its flower. So not all proteas are pretty. Ground to be reclaimed by the forest. Or is it important for you to have around? Part of peat family, legumes of the Julia. They normally bloom October through November, got a nice pink flower, grow about seven meters, last about 12 to 15 meters. They just bloom over it. So there's some coming up the other day. It's very, some must be real ones looking like they're dead. Those are cure bomb. Around the corner from here is the cattle point for motorized traffic. Okay. There's two market boys strung across the river, and as far as you can go with motorized traffic, in the next two kilometers is canoes only. Okay. Thank you up to the nature hut, the only place you can sleep on the river at night. All right, so once we stop here, I'm going to put the plank out the back. You can walk off the back of the boat quite comfortably. If you don't want to get off the boat, you don't have to. You can relax on the boat or on the beach wherever you feel comfortable. If you don't want to get off the boat, you don't have to. You can relax wherever you feel comfortable. If you're going up to the, to the bathroom, one of the stairs up, a little stone building, proper plushing toilet. At 
the turning points you can find a toilet and a picnic area we spend about 40 minutes there you can have a swim in the river also We had a short walk at the turn point and the bird sounds were incredible, however we couldn't see them.
take your boat cruise with Russell on the telephone number on the website and arrive early, pay your conservation fees at the gates, park your vehicle, get onto the boat with your picnic basket and your camera and enjoy yourself. This was a really great way to spend two and a half hours. Russell was extremely knowledgeable and passionate about this area and we enjoyed his interesting stories and his good sense of humor. Blittenberg Bay is the perfect base from where to explore the garden route.
site of the Beacon Island Resort it used to be a whaling station in the early 1900s and then a small hotel was built in 1940 by Hugh Owen Grant. The present hotel was built in 1972. The Beacon Island Resort has 200 ensuite rooms. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. And heaven's not my home. Find the strength to fight like this no more. I've had all I can take, too much to carry around. I'm tired, weak, and lonely, and I'm ready to lay down. Run away, I might just run away. I might just leave it all behind and find another. The Kierbooms Lagoon Caravan Park is situated just outside Bittenberg Bay on the banks of the Kierbooms River.
this sat on the jetty or on the little piece of um, beach next to the lagoon and watched the bird life which is incredible on this lagoon.